Beeston is just an incredible open space in terms of mindfulness and well-being. I think it's one of these places that I always come to and I feel it's a little bit more relaxed. And it's got a fascinating and amazing history I and mean, really lots to engage with when you're here. They've been amazed by the sheer vast space that actually is outside of Birmingham. Being out and about and being at these heritage sites brings learning alive. When we have the students here, we are able to really engage with them in lots of different hands-on activities, from grinding flour to doing a little bit of weaving on looms. If we're doing something maybe in the woodland, we get to do a little bit of foraging. So it's really about them sort of taking ownership of their own learning. It's no point me standing up at the front and telling them, this is X, this is Y. And we're in a really fortunate position here that we can say, right, here's the materials, you figure it out and we'll learn this together, we'll experiment, we'll trial and hopefully we'll, we'll get to where we need to go through that. When we get back to school, we're moving on to the Iron Age, so the fact that the children have been able to see some of the actual tools that they would have used and some of the technology and how life continued to develop, that would be fantastic for them to take in, but actually to see some of the shapes of those arrowheads and spears that they would have had, and that's our next chapter. I've learned that in the Stone Age and the Bronze Age they're all different because the Bronze Age was metal but the Stone Age was with lots of stones. So it's a really exciting part for us at the moment is the new Bronze Age Roundhouse which is an absolutely incredible project that we've had here on the crag for the last little while. Entirely volunteer built, they've thrown themselves into it and now we've got a fantastic prehistoric classroom for our students to come along and you know we're not just showing pictures we're able to get in able to touch the walls able to see the wattle and daub able to see the timber see the thatch and just kind of sit in it and really immerse themselves in prehistory what we're going to get you to do in just a moment is we're going to get you to build your own miniature version okay all right guys pro tip don't forget the door and having a look at your roundhouse it looks lovely but it looks a little bit square well done guys, fantastic. It's standing upright, got walls and a roof. That is definitely a win. Excellent guys, that is a fantastic house. My favourite part of the day was the roundhouses because they were very big and dark and the, no animals could see you if the door was shut. I think one of the fantastic things about coming here is seeing how you are inspiring uh, young children and seeing them going away and really kind of fostering that interest in history so that they want to go away and learn more. So I think it's really kind of uplifting from myself to, to start that session and even in the shorter period of time I've got with them, see their sort of learning journey move through. So really, really rewarding. It's the memories that they make and it's how everything then stacks onto it. There's only so much that we can do within a classroom but you bring children here and suddenly they understand the vocabulary that we're using, they understand what life was like for people in the prehistory and they're able to have a better grasp of chronology and I think that's what's important for our children is that we do everything possible to stop and think how can I make this magical for them and make learning completely captivating.